Hi everyone! In one of our earlier episodes, Master spoke about the five key areas of life that will help us balance our life and help us live our greatest life. He already talked about the area of health. So today, this episode is going to be devoted uh, to talking about the second key area of life, which is our work and our career. So hi, Master. Hi. Uh, is there a difference, Master, if I can go straight? Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between work and career? Well, work is what you earn your living and uh, money. Mm -hmm. But career is more than that. When you do work with the component of a career, you do build your equity of life. Not only your equity in terms of money, promotions, or uh, value, you also add your focus of more meaningful purpose. So if we have a career, it's a little bit more advanced than just working. Work, uh, people can work as a waiter or as a janitor or as a clerk, and then it's more for them to go for a school to get a career, something like that. So career makes you more intelligent. It does make you more significant and your value added to others and also to your building up your, I would say, resume and also your own reputation on that line. So it builds you expertise and it builds you a deeper uh, penetration of the work that you do. So work is more of an earning prong, which doesn't always lead to your, I would say, value added to your life as a whole individual. But curry is more meaningful. It, it does give you a build up of character towards your specialization. And I think it's, it's something that you feel that you like to do. Yeah. So like me, Master, I had a great career. And you know, uh, what happens when you reach like the height of your career? How do you up your career? How do you find your purpose? I think there's a certain time when you have evolved as an individual soul, when you have developed and expanded consciousness, where your mind starting to see different things bigger than before, when you just started you starting to feel that you are bored with the normal work and career. And so when, you, when your f features of life expand, as if you, were, if you were traveling, you look at how big the world is compared to your own small place at work, you're starting to aspire for bigger things that are more significant, more meaningful. And, and you sometimes look for meaning. So when you go for that level where you're starting to get bored with your work and career, or you're starting to feel that is, you are inadequate and in contributing to life and society, then you're starting to question, is this all that I can do? Or is there more things that I can apply my time, my talent, my, my value, so that I can make a big difference, a positive or a world of difference to humanity, to my surroundings? Mm -hmm. So you can look for what we call an alignment of your spiritual purpose and your work or career. And how do you do that? Well, it's not that easy. That's why you need a mentor or a life coach to really ask you the right questions and puncture your desires, want to do versus need to do versus must do, you see, or ought to do. You need to differentiate those things. And so when you find a mentor who will guide you, who will ask you the questions that makes you even feel awkward to answer because it's, it's like an, you feel obsolete after that. And you think, oh my God, I'm really absolute. I'm doing things that are not so significant anymore with respect to my future potential. Mm -hmm. So you have to compare your career and work with your future potential. Mm -hmm. How big you can be? What do you want to become? Mm -hmm. And what are the greatest things you need to achieve that makes a world of difference and significance? So you need to ask in terms of significance. Or if you want something bigger than now, you can ask, what are the other areas of life that you need to expand in your own character and your own development that needs an opening of opportunity to develop that, to hone those features, those qualities? Because if you do the same work and career, you have maximized already your features, your qualities, your feats, your fa facets. So how do you expand your life if you have mastery of the same features? So you need to open up even a place in you that is not developed yet and develop a certain work or career potential to hone those expanded part of you that is uh, dormant and benign. So you need to develop a certain 
inclusiveness of that new thing that you want to develop so that you have an avenue to work on them every day. And that is very weird for most people because they don't want to do something that they are not specialized on. But they want to do and die and retire on the specialized field that they have developed and mastered already. You need to expand a little bit on zones of uncharted territories or something like that. But including your feats and features and qualification from your old career and expand it. So it's called expansion of career or diversification of career. And one question you can ask is, would you want to do this new career and added career even you are less paid or if they don't pay you, would you still do it? And if you think that is the right thing to do and is a value added to the world at large and humanity at large, then go for it even you're paid less. Because <clears throat> most people think that if you go to a new career, you should be paid more, correct? Or at least paid the same. But there are areas of life that you want to develop that you are not the best expert on it. But it is a potential additional expertise to your old that when you combine them synergistically at the end, you will be paid more than adding two careers. So that one I think people have to think about even when they are about to retire. Yeah, something like that. Or even life beyond retirement. Okay. Master, I have a question. What advice can you give to people who really want to break away from their careers? They're so bored, but they cannot do it because they are tied down to obligations, financial obligations to the family, etc. And yet they know that they're in the wrong career and they want to fulfill that purpose. What advice can you give to them? Well, that is a big choice and a decision which people have to prepare. You cannot just snap it out unless you have already enough cash flow and retirement funds that you can just wing it out. But I think you should plan like a six months plan that if you want to get out and exit from your old work and career, because it's getting boring and also you don't feel like going to work every day and it's like feeling, feeling dreaded when you think about your work, is to prepare a cash flow that will substitute your, your, your earnings while you're not in the same work and then moving to a new learning curve so that you will add that career to your old f uh, expertise and eventually you'll earn more. So it's like a more of an investment than losing money. You have to look at this like a project. If you look at a project, then you have a plan. Like a transition plan, phase zero, wherein you are transitioning from this career to that new career or a new learning curve to earn new, uh, I would say, expertise so that you'll be paid more eventually. So if it were a project, you would not get scared because people are used to managing project or dealing with projects. So you put a project called transitioning your career to a bigger expansion of career. Secondly is to save a lot and really prepare to be f more frugal and thrifty so that you can save something that will be your buffer, like a backbone uh, income or a backbone, uh, I would say, money to take charge of your gaps if you are not earning enough for your new career to come. So I think uh, preparation financially also, you have to brief and be friendly <laughs> to people around you and say, okay, guys, I might shift career soon and I might not earn the same way. And so please, let's conserve. You, you have to tell your people who are dependent on your financial earnings that uh, please save and conserve because I'll be shifting a new career and I might not be earning the same as before, as now. So let's agree that you have to do something else to adjust your own budget so that I will not be able to, I am not obliged to give you every day for this period of six months or one year. So you have to be transparent to your family or to people depending on your income. And also to have a real decision that this is what you really want to do as a must do rather than want to do. So people have to differentiate that I want this versus I need this versus I must do this because it's right for me. If you can answer those differentiations, then you should make a decision and immediately execute for a given time frame as a project, as a project. And Master, that's true, you know, because at the time that I was directing and I was starting to get kind of bored or getting tired with all the uh, puyat, I, I knew that I, at one point the directing would end, so I started studying and I really invested in studying energy healing. Mm -hmm. And so now that I'm no longer a director, here I am. So I really, really prepared for that. Yes, that's an important concept. You do not snap 
If you want to go to a new thing, you should be self-studying already mm -hmm. so that you do not start from zero to a new career. Mm -hmm. And you carry over your features, mm -hmm. your, your good points, your good qualities. It's just additional of new skill sets and a new aptitude. Mm -hmm. But you need to bring your good attitude. See, you do not lose your attitude. Wherever you are, your attitude should be with you, your good character, your good features. What you need to add is the new skill sets. Mm -hmm. Because if you keep on changing attitudes, uh, you'll be more confused of your identity and you will have identity crisis mm -hmm. and you don't know, did you make a mistake or are you really doing the right thing? But if you bring your own attitudes, the good ones that you have amassed for many years, all you have to do is what are the new skill sets that you need to add so that you do not put yourself to unstable mode. Mm -hmm. People do become unstable in shifting to new lines of work or career because they want to change everything. It is very dangerous to change everything or nothing also. So you, you have a checklist of what are the best attitudes that you need to bring and not change in your character. And what are the new features and new skill sets you need to add to make this career blossom mm -hmm. immediately rather than taking a, curve, a very slow curve to pick up. Mm -hmm. you, you need to do that. And you need to have inventory of your skill sets. Mm -hmm. What are your skill sets, your attitude, uh, aptitudes? And you need to write down your good attitudes that you need to carry over. When you do that, you have an inventory of aptitudes and attitudes. You, you will not panic when you shift. You will be more confident that, my God, I can use these things I have already gotten, my wisdom, my knowledge, my social capital, your, your social assets, your connections to people, your network. You will not lose those things. In fact, they will see you like, ah, good for you. Because you look older in your own career because I think you were bored and you were burned out and so you have a fresh outlook. And I would suggest people to have a sabbatical leave. You know, you, you need a pause. You know, you need to pause a little bit so that you will refresh yourself and shred away all your old skin and your old energy that's not going to be good for your next step. These old habits that also went with your old career should be really refurbished with the new features which you want to achieve for the next step. So you have to have a, maybe a two weeks sabbatically or a vacation away from anything, not, f not with family, not with work, not with friends. Just be yourself and then audit yourself, have your checklist ready, and then you visualize all the things you want to achieve and become eventually. And study, self-study. You can have a YouTube study of the new market, the new industry you're entering in, or the new likes and dislikes of that position. And if you're looking for a manager's position, what are the competitive edge solutions that is already known and how do you improve it even? So when you get interviews or when you are going to a new business deals, they, you are already plugged in to the new trends, the new terms, new jargons. You're the, the trendy, uh, I would say, circumstances that they will quiz you or that, that they will ask you if you need to be in the new industry or a new line of work. So it's, it's a lot of preparation. Even one month of vacation must be uh, good enough to reprogram you, to unlearn, to learn, unlearn and relearn things. And that is like the challenging positioning because that is really, it can make you and unmake you. So that one to me is very important. Yeah, actually I took a one year sabbatical, massive, but that was a forced sabbatical <laughs> because I had my accident, but uh, it was a good year and everything you're saying made me realize a lot of things. And if I may add to what you said, mm -hmm. I think it's really also important to invest in yourself, right? If you cannot prepare for the second part of your life with your hanging mm -hmm. on. Like me, I really wanted to go into energy healing. And so I really invested and I really studied because there's no such thing as a free thing. You know? I just get reactions that, oh, it's too expensive. Oh, it's like, no, you got to think of your next, go, uh, your next path in life, right, Master? So yeah. you really need to invest. Yeah, because when you go to school, you invest for four yeah. years, five years. That's right. You got the master's degree for two years and, and doctorate. It. And you time, your, your mind, money. emotions, your, your time, money, money, everything, and you're not earning that yeah. time, yeah? yeah? Now, since you already graduated from that uh, level, you need to invest for your next level, and don't be afraid to invest in yourself. Yeah. It's, it's not like free ride that, oh, I want to just download all the fish I want and, uh, from the internet. Now, people are just used to the internet downloads, that, oh, I want to be a quick fix. 
No, sometimes you need a slow yeah. graduation from the old stuff to go to the new, uh, new embark uh, path. And it requires psychological preparation, spiritual preparation. I think assessment also of who you want to be, to become, because it's more of that that you are targeting, the vision and mission of your life that is the next step. So you make it bigger, play bigger in such a way that your aspirations should be bigger than before. Otherwise, if you just want to aspire for a new salary and a new uh, reputation, uh, it's still part of uh, it's just career extension. It's not career expansion, it's a difference. Expansion and, and, and extension. You need to expand yourself by looking at the bigger mission and vision of your life that even you do not get paid for the rest of your life, you will still do it because first, it makes a big significance to your life and to others around you and to the world at large. It brings you higher value contribution to others. So you know that before you sleep, you know that, oh my God, if I will die tonight and I will not wake up in the next morning, I have contributed values today. That value added to others is the measurement for you to bring your career to a higher purpose. And I say, if you were missing for a month, do people miss you from your new career or not? If nobody is missing you because you are insignificant, you are just a decoration in a workplace, then that feels bad. But if you say, oh my God, I will not be missing for a month because I'm not there, I'm the pillar of the new mission. I'm the pillar of this group, so if I'm absent, they will not be able to, to work. So you can see that your significance, imagine the significance that you want to be, has high value added to others and to a bigger community and to the world and to humanity at large. And also that when you build a career, the next career or the expanded career, you know that there's a value added to a bigger whole. It's not just to you or family or your workplace. It's not about industry anymore. It's about humanity, developing humanity in others, de developing your spiritual development that brings more meaning to your, to your life. And so that one is the next step of most career people. The significance, the value added, and also the meaning of their contribution and the meaning of their life that they are really doing something big and high impact and a world of difference. Yeah, so thank you very much for that, Master. But before we end, may I just ask a question? Uh, it's everything that you said, really. And I just like to the people who are uh, approaching their second uh, half of life. Like I remember my father, you know, when he retired, he was, uh, he was the boss in his office. But when he retired, he lost all purpose and everything. Until the day he died, he was like, he had no purpose in life. So it's everything that you're saying. But how do you chunk up the new gener the older generation or those who are retiring? Because I know that's a lot of, uh, that's a big issue with those of my generation mm -hmm. because they have health issues and stuff. So how do they, you chunk them up when they're like really like so, so like used to the past life? It's everything you're saying, but what's the one connecting step that yeah. they need to do to get to everything you're saying? When people are dogmatic and fixated and crystallized, I think that's the challenge. So I really, really, suggest a healing plan for them. They need to be healed because some of their burnout stage of work is really making them depressed, uh, feeling anxious, and feeling that really they don't want to do anything anymore. It's like a, when you have a trajectory where you're, the bullet goes like this, they're already almost on the deep curve, like here. Almost like a few years, they're finished. So before you can go to that deep curve, you need to reboot and disrupt your curve by installing a new purpose. What else can you do aside from your 30 years of work or 40 years of work? Or what is life after retirement? Or what is life after your old career? So again, uh, one of the things that I recommend is to get really a heal plan, to be overhauled. They have to have a makeover, a total makeover, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, ment energetically, and physically. They need to stay healthier without carrying over an, a new health program for you to get back to your vitality and will to be, and uh, excitement, the dynamic feeling that you are doing something every day that's more important than your own time for yourself, then you can inspire yourself to go to the next step. But without that inspiration and the spark and the spice of life to reboot yourself, I think people are just in the deep curve, are almost finished. This life, they will be forgotten. So if you don't want to be forgotten after you retire, 
and just be one of the st statistical number that you have been retired and receiving a pension and nobody even looks at you and nobody say excuse me if they step on your foot, you know? Y you need to bring back your curve upward and install a new purpose or a new work or career that brings more contribution to society. And even you feel good alone doing something valuable to others. It's you first that you need to please. You cannot be pleasing all your family because you're still giving money or uh, you know, caressing their ego. You need to first love yourself because you're burnt out if you're stressed, if you feel like you're fading away. Please reboot yourself, get a healer. Get a person who can really coach and mentor you to bring back the sp spice in life. Yeah. And, and then you get more energy, more willpower, so that you need the will to be. You know, if you don't have the will to be, you do not aspire for the next morning or the next month. You need that willpower to become. You need that power, the engine of change. And secondly is you need a new group to inspire you. You cannot do it alone. If you're alone doing your work, it's not the best solution to have a meaning in life. You need to be a group that will contaminate you with inspiration, that will challenge your mind again, that will poke your ego that you are not really so important anymore because your big ego can also be your barrier that, oh, I'm the best of my field. But are you best in the world? Are you best in other things? You can be 100% in one thing and zero on other things. So you need to start to also data collect. Anything that will refurbish you to feel that you are adequate. Because when you're starting to get old and there's so much new information on the internet and you feel like you don't even know how to operate your computers anymore and, and doesn't know how to download apps, then you're starting to feel obsolete. And that is one of your enemy, to feel obsolete and the lack of you know, the knowledge you need for the next step will make you an excuse, oh, uh, I'm too old, you know, too many excuses, and it becomes an alibi. And those alibi can be real, but it becomes your barricade, self-defeating alibis. So I think uh, you need a healer, you need a life coach, and more so a life mentor to really bring you the wholesome approach to your next step. You disrupt the curve, do not fade away, and also Invoke your soul, invoke God or the divine providence to give you more a next chance with the next step so that you will be again useful and be significant, significant to a bigger number of people. Okay, so you know what guys, everything that Master is saying, I am the proof of concept. Yes, I really am. Really I'm the proof of concept. When I came here, I was 58 years old, two years of retirement, and I was like a wilted <laughs> flower. And look at me now. Burnt out. Yeah, I was so burnt out and really weak. But look at me now. I'm strong. I have a new purpose in life. My drive is really, yeah, you know, right. it's really, really very high, even higher than when I was a director. And I know that there's just so much waiting for me out there. And it's really, you know, my hope for you guys who are watching this, especially those of my generation. If you could like get to my, to, to, to where I am now, or if we could help you get to where I am now, you know, then this blog, it would have served its purpose. So thank you so much. And Master, thank you again yes, sure. for sharing your wisdom. And I really hope that uh, your words will hit and uh, strike those people out there who are watching. There is so much more waiting for you guys out there. Okay, so in the next... Um, three episodes, we're going to discuss the remaining areas of life. That's the family, spirituality, environmental, and social contribution. So keep watching, keep growing with us, and let us help you live your greatest life. Bye, everyone. <laughs>